was a teenager in the late 1990s when I first started looking into witchcraft. My hair was shaved down to almost bald and dyed sunflower yellow. I had a friend use a stencil to spray paint. Yep, actual paint in an actual spray can, a big red heart on one side of my head. Among my most treasured possessions was a pair of pants made from a shopping center banner that my friends and I had stolen from a rooftop. Things have changed a bit since then. The witchcraft in this book is the witchcraft I am practicing now. It is informed by everything I have done and been involved with up until now. Eclectic witchcraft, Norse-inspired paganism, Alexandrian Wicca, lots of pagan community-building work, and other bits and pieces including stolen banners and DIY hairdos. And that's what makes it uniquely my own. It won't be the craft I am practicing in ten or even five years' time, as witchcraft is, as you'll find if you persist with it, quite a fluid and unexpected journey most of the time. And more than you know, it's tempered by what you do and who you do it with as you go along. A lot has changed, but I can sew my own clothes with ease, even though they're made of tamer, more legal stuff these days. Getting started. Doing the thing. This book has been put together with the intention of inspiring the listener to experience witchcraft with the head, the hands, and the heart, with activities that get you thinking, learning, doing, and reflecting. Many new witches have trouble making the transition from reading and learning about witchcraft to actually practicing it. This shouldn't be the natural order of things. It's normal to have reservations about trying a new thing, but don't let it get to a point where you are holding back because you don't feel you know enough. Enough is a nebulous term and is almost impossible to define in this context. Just how much knowledge is enough anyway? I don't think I've met a witch or pagan anywhere who felt they knew or had read enough. Amateur or ace, we're all learning all the time. And one of the best ways to learn is by actually doing and experiencing. Consider this your permission slip. Not that you need one.